everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, today's video is quite informal. I'm literally just sat here with my vlogging camera, but it's a video that I have thought was quite important for me to make. Now, my channel is only really a year old and I feel like I'm learning something new every single day and I feel like every day is a new lesson. But this video, as I'm sure you've already gathered from the title, is more of an informative video. So as much as I will be sort of referencing like high-end accessories and fashion and things like that, in this video, I am gonna be telling you how I started my collection, how nowadays I afford to buy things and my top tips for buying high-end stuff when you don't necessarily have the budget. I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> I wish I was, but I'm not a millionaire. Uh, Ali and I live in our first home that we've ever bought together. Obviously we have a mortgage and things like that. I don't come from a wealthy family, so none of my items are bought by my family or anything like that. Everything has been bought and purchased by me if it's not a gift from a brand or if I haven't had sort of like gift vouchers to put to, towards it. But my collection started with me buying them myself and uh, the majority of my stuff I do honestly buy myself because um, I wish people gave me more. <laughs> so I remember when it dawned on me that you could actually have a sort of high quantity of expensive items in your wardrobe if you just chose to pick them carefully, save for them. I always thought of it in my head as if I buy one thing a month, by the end of the year, I have 12 items in a wardrobe and if I buy them carefully it means that they'll stand the test of time which is why you'll see that I often tend to go for sort of more classic um, understated colours and styles just so that I get the most wear out. I don't have the money to have an entire wardrobe full of only high-end stuff as much as I wish I could believe me if I could I would. So I started my designer collection long before this YouTube channel. I was still at university, um, I was a student, and again, I didn't have my parents like funding me or anything like that. I had three jobs, so I was working at like Topshop, and then I worked at two bars as well. Uh, I think one was called Bar Soviet, so if you go to Northampton Uni, and Bar Soviet is still there, I used to work there. <laughs> so the reason why I like designer items, I, I mean, I, I, it's a very difficult thing to answer, I just, I really love the sort of the way that they make you feel when you wear them. I like the craftsmanship, the design, the intricate details and the one thing I especially like at the moment is when you're able to tell a designer just by looking at something and you're like, ah, that's so and so or that's so and so or she's wearing this. Depicting a wealth that I don't have is not why I buy these things. My grandma was very much into fashion as was my grandpa. My dad is, I think my dad's got great dress sense. <laughs> my nonna was obviously a tailor so the craftsmanship of fashion has always been interesting. Obviously I'm not a designer but I appreciate that part of it and I love it when a new style and a new trend is introduced and it kind of, it gets me excited. And just in the way that some people collect stamps and some people collect cars and um, some people collect Pandora beads and things like that. Depending on what your disposable income is, you are able to devote an element of your wage to that a month. So yeah, I'm not doing this for investment purposes. I don't ever really look to resell things for a higher value than I bought them, usually because I wear most of my items to death. <laughs> so anyway, with all of that said, um, I've probably rambled on for a very, very long time. I just thought that I would share a couple of the tips and tricks that I've used to be able to buy handbags, to be able to have a few of them in my collection, and to be able to devote an amount of my income a month to buy the items that I actually want. So with that little background done, I thought that we could get into the tips. So let's get into it. I feel like this is really formal, and it's not. <laughs> I've got my light shining in the back so that it's not so dark, because it is a little bit dark outside. But yeah, this is not a formal video. Anyway, tip number one. <laughs> so the most important tip that I can give anyone that's thinking of starting a designer wardrobe, or starting a designer handbag collection, or a designer shoe collection, or whatever, it actually applies to anything, really. But um, I would definitely say it's to be responsible. That might seem extremely obvious um, but I also think that maybe it isn't sometimes but for me I learned very early on that I had no one to depend on other than myself so if I got myself into hot water with my finances or with you know not being able to pay things and blah 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 I knew 
that the only person that was going to be able to get me out of that was me. So I learned to respect the money that I had. I made sure that I didn't start my collection before I could afford to buy my first item. Um, I didn't have credit cards. I've never had a credit card because I knew what I was like. I know that I'm the kind of person that'd be like, woo, free money! <laughs> and it's not free money. I used whatever disposable income I had from the three jobs that I was working whilst I was at uni to devote to buying any items that I wanted into my wardrobe. So it's very important to not buy anything that you cannot afford to buy. It definitely is an obvious one, but I wanted to make sure that that was at the forefront of this video. So tip number two is to work out your income. Some people have multiple incomes. Some people have an income that differs every month and some people have a set wage. It was quite easy for me to know what I had coming in and what I had going out when I was working for someone else. But when I became self-employed, I had to sit down and be like, okay, I actually don't know how much I'm gonna have coming in on a monthly basis. I need to work out how much I need to earn to ensure that my mortgage, my petrol, food, and all of those things are covered. So that was the thing that I did first. I worked out everything I needed and that included every, everything that could possibly go wrong. So a contingency plan of like 200 pounds, if like the dishwasher broke or something like that. Then I would look at how much I want to save on a monthly basis. And I'm actually really good at saving, like really good at saving. I think it's one of the only things that I'm actually good at. Um, I'm not good at dancing, I'm not good at singing, I'm not good at anything like that, but saving I am so, so good at. And I'm not talking about saving to then spend on designer handbags, I'm talking about saving for my future. So that's the money that I take out of my wage every single month and I put into a bank account and I treat it like it doesn't exist and it just never gets touched. And then I'll have a little amount that I am able to put to one side every now and again. And that is what I call my little play money, which I'm allowed to use to buy handbags, watches. Now I don't actually go out a lot. Um, we don't go out at the weekends drinking really. We don't really go out for dinner a lot. And there's certainly not very expensive places where we live around here. So um, the money that I would spend on those kinds of things is the money that I use to buy my handbag. So yeah, the difference is, is that some people like to spend their money on some things and some people like to spend their money on other things. I also don't spend a huge amount on ASOS anymore. I was spending so much money on ASOS before and I've really reined that in and just started buying bits that I wear a lot. So you're making sure that all of your bills and all of your mortgages or rent or anything like that is paid before anything else. Um, and also that you're constantly saving. Like that is the one thing that I would say is so important is that you're constantly, constantly saving because it's actually very rewarding as well. I find it one of the most rewarding things know that I have a security blanket and that I'm planning for our future. Just one thing to add on to that point is that obviously Ali and I have a house and we're on the property ladder. In the UK, there's a lot more emphasis put on buying and I don't think it's the same necessarily in other countries but I would definitely say that it's good to like treat yourself and if you want to buy like a handbag or you want a handbag for your birthday or you want some shoes or whatever, it's, it, it's, it's fine to do that. Like I'm not saying that it's not, but I would say that if you're constantly buying when necessarily you're not on the property ladder or you're still living at home or things like that, um, I, would, I would always suggest making sure that your future is always the priority and not having a vast collection. Um, that's definitely um, something that I waited for. I waited until we had our house, until I knew that I could pay the mortgage before I went buying handbags. So yeah, that's definitely something that I think is really important. Um, maybe for people more my age, maybe a little bit younger, I don't know. <laughs> Tip number three is to plan your purchases. So what I like to do is um, if I see a bag that I like, I will always have that bag in my mind. So if I'm putting an outfit together, I will think, oh, that bag or those shoes or that coat will look really nice with this outfit. And after a few weeks, it will reach a point where I'm like, I'm seeing where this product or item fits into my wardrobe really nicely. And this is the bit that you guys don't see. So recently I bought a Diorama bag, a Christian Dior Diorama bag. I'd been mulling this bag over in my head. I'd seen quite a few girls that had, had it. And I was just like, would it go in my wardrobe? Because one of my other bags that was similar, I didn't wear so much, but I kept trying on outfits and I was like, oh, that looks so nice. It looks so nice with this outfit. It looks so nice with that outfit. 
and I just do that for a few weeks, maybe a few months, and then when I feel like I'm ready to maybe purchase it, that's when I'll take the money from my little special place where I keep the money that I save from my earnings to spend on this stuff, and if I have enough, then I'll buy the item. So I thought that it was really important for me to include that hint or tip or whatever, um, just because sometimes it might seem like I impulse purchase or I'm not very responsible. Now this point to me is really important because I did impulse buy something once and if you remember it was those Chanel boots and I felt sick. I literally felt sick when I bought them and I actually didn't wear them for so long because I was so worried. I learned then that impulse purchasing without even thinking about something it probably isn't the best way because it just it gave me anxiety. So now I tend to mull items over in my head and um, I find that I feel a lot more comfortable when I do go and buy things that way. Some people do things visually, they put them on like pin boards, I know that Sophie Chauhet does that, she has like a pin board and she puts it on there and she constantly thinks about it and um, mulls the sort of purchase over, so that's another way that you can do it as well. Tip number four is try not to be a hoarder. <laughs> I am quite good at this, I've got to say, I don't hang on to purchases that I don't wear. So I love having an array of handbags and shoes, but if they're just sat there gathering dust, I am not one to hold on to them and it's of no worth to me to hold on to them. So if I'm not using it or it's not getting the love that it deserves and I possibly, you know, my style has changed and it just doesn't fit into my wardrobe anymore like it once did, I am not afraid to sell it. That is a big thing that I do. I use Depop or people will even email me sometimes and be like, um, can I buy this handbag off you? And I'll be like, well, actually, I haven't worn that in ages. So, yeah, you can. As much as I wish I was able to keep every single bag that I ever bought, it to me, it's just not financially viable to do that. So if something isn't getting the wear that it deserves, I am more than happy to just sell it on. So if you did ever want to buy any of my wardrobe or you wanted to know if I was selling things, don't hesitate to go over to my Depop because that happens a lot. There have been a lot of handbags going through this house. I actually really like it when I'm able to get rid of something that I don't necessarily wear and then replace it with something that I do wear. It also means that I'm not necessarily losing out on money and the money is just going back into my wardrobe. So that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> Tip number five is don't be ashamed to buy secondhand. Like I think buying secondhand is a brilliant, brilliant way to get the items that you want in your wardrobe. I started my collection by buying things secondhand so I think it's a brilliant way to get the bags that you want for a little bit cheaper there are great websites like Vestiaire Collective which I will link down below they actually authenticate the items for you when you buy them so you don't end up with any fakes so you can buy with like peace of mind you can also shop via eBay and then use places like the purse forum which will authenticate handbags for you so I will put all of the links to that down below if you want to sort of shop that way because there are so many handbags out there shoes out there, coats out there, waiting for a good home and it's a really great way to start your collection to see if you even like spending that kind of money on things. You might buy a handbag and be like, that was the worst money I ever spent. Tip number six is one that I'm just going to say loud and clear. Do not get yourself into debt whatever you do. It kind of goes hand in hand with tip number one, but I just want to make sure that that is a known trend throughout this video. Do not get yourself into debt. You should be spending your own money, money that you have and money that you can afford to devote to these kinds of purchases. Tip number seven is to have goals and you don't have to buy everything right there and then. You can think, okay, I'll, by the time I'm 27, I want to own a Chanel handbag. And that's something that you can work towards and you can save towards and then you can reach that point and think, do I want to spend this money on a Chanel handbag or do I want to take that money and maybe get the car that I want or put it towards some other things like a wedding or bits and bobs like that. Whatever your goals are, you can be constantly saving whether they're changing or not. But the point is, is that you don't have to have everything right now. Your earnings and your situations will change. So aside from all of the handbags and shoes that I love at the moment, my goal is to have a really nice home for Ali and I and Lumi to live in where we've got a lot of space because this is our first home that we're living in at the moment and it's quite cramped, especially now that Ali is working from 
home. So as much as I just bought a new handbag, I sold one to get that into my collection so that I can devote more of my money to ensuring that we can move house very, very soon and hopefully have a little bit more space. So it's good to have long-term and short-term goals when it comes to saving and spending and bits and bobs like that. And I keep saying bits and bobs, but those are just a few of the tips that I use when I'm buying these items because I know that sometimes it can seem like I just, oh, have a new handbag and there's not really been any thought process behind it and I don't ever want to be repeating myself in videos like oh I saved for a very very long time you know it gets a bit monotonous so when I haul a load of handbags I haven't bought all those handbags in one month um sometimes I wish I did goals I haven't I do like to collect clothes I collect bags over time and then sit down and do a video and tell you about them but I do hope that this video and all of the little bits of information that I've included in it have maybe helped and helped you understand how I afford the items in my wardrobe and how I um, save for them and ensure that I have the money to be able to buy them. But if you have any tips of your own, if you are a bit of a designer addict like I am, I would love to know because I need all the help I can get. <laughs> but it's really important to me that my channel tells you about what items to buy, gives you as much information about them, but also teaches you how to do it in a responsible way. But I would hate to think that anyone watched my videos and thought that I was being irresponsible with money and I was communicating this via my channel. So I wanted to share my little tips and tricks that I use on a daily basis to ensure that I buy things well within my budget and um, I've always got my safety net there if anything ever goes wrong. <laughs> Fingers crossed they don't. <laughs> but anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to let me know if you've got any tips of your own because I would love to hear them. And let me know if you liked this video, if you like this kind of like sit down, chatty, informal thing where I ramble on for God knows how long. But yeah, other than that, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. <laughs>